So we're dealing with our patient here today, Drago, who's um, he's actually got multiple disc herniations in his uh, lower back. So he's had um, uh, uh, bulges in the in the disc in the back, which have been pressing on the spinal cord, according to his MRIs and X-rays. Um, he's actually had surgery done um, as well as a, a couple of complex surgeries. Um, today we're going to be working on him using some chiropractic techniques. We're about towards the end of his his treatment program, so we've put him on a ten week program. Um, he's on his uh, into his eighth session today, but he's had a lot of progress. Um, when you came in, remember you were your walking wasn't uh, yeah, so progress. good. Yeah, good. yeah. Mm -hmm. So your progression is is really good. Um, so he was at a point where he couldn't work, he couldn't do anything. Um, now he's coming in, even though he's still got um, some discomfort, he's functioning, right? So you today you walked in, no no problem. You didn't use the stick like before. You didn't use your crutches. You know, when, when I first no, met you, remember? Uh, no problem, uh, me working, no problem, no good. Yeah, okay, so when, when you're working, that's when it's worse, yeah? Yes. Okay, but you know, previously he was pretty much bed bound in the sense that he wasn't getting up and he wasn't doing anything. So we've seen some good changes in him um, and we're just going to talk you through our treatment session today. With some of the techniques that you see often, you see people's necks getting cracked and you see people's backs getting cracked, you see the different techniques that we use and other people use on YouTube. Um, and you'll also see cupping today. We're going to use some cupping techniques and specifically fire cupping. But very often you don't see the clinical kind of story behind that and how the treatment fits into people's problems and what they're used for and what the outcomes are. So hopefully I'm going to talk you through a little bit about that to help you have an understanding of what the purpose of the therapies are that we're, we're using and what's the logic behind them. Are they just kind of, are we just using them to, to kind of change energies? Are we using them to work on the physiology? Hopefully I'm going to give you a little bit of an insight into that today. He's had a lot of issues, as I said, in his lower back um, and he's had <coughs> Uh, his, his muscle tone is very, very stiff. He works in, uh, in, in kind of the, the trade in the sense that he's constantly lifting and bending and he's doing all of these sorts of things. So what we've been working on is improving his mechanics. So a lot of the issues we found around his SI joints are what were causing a lot of his pain. Even though he's, he's got past disc injuries, um, from our assessment we found that it wasn't the discs that were causing his pain because we were having reproduction of pain of complaints. So we were getting the pain that he was suffering with when we were pressing and challenging into the SI joints, when we were pressing into the hip muscles, um, and this was a really big part of his problem. So working on his spinal mechanics is a really important aspect of addressing his problem. And we're going to do a little bit of that now with some chiropractic adjustments. Okay, so nice and relaxed, Drago. I'm going to put a little bit of pressure just into here. Okay, nice and loose. Okay, perfect. Okay, so what we're doing is just encouraging different parts of the spine to move appropriately. If we get certain areas of the spine that get locked up and they don't move, and then we get, as a result, we get more mobility and, and, and over activity in areas which are moving. So this is where we get, you know, early degenerative changes, we get disc injuries, um, and we get some of the the wear and tear that people talk about in the lower spine, especially when the upper portions of the spine and the hips become very stiff and very tight. So this is part of what I'm working on. If you're thinking, why is he working on his upper back and on his neck? We'll get knock-on effects of these problems up this way and vice versa. We'll get knock-on effects of these problems lower down. Unfortunately, many people's approach is very focused on the problem area. They want to focus on where the pain is and where the problem is. Um, and they just focus in that one area, but we're not designed to work as individual joints or individual regions. Our bodies work as a whole, and there's what we call the mechanical chain. If you shake one end of the chain, the other end will have an effect. And this is the same principle that we're using in our treatment and our management of our spinal um, uh, dysfunction patients. Good. Okay, in here. Nice and loose. Good. So we're just doing some SI drops, so sacroiliac joint drops. Okay. And you're okay, Drago? Yeah, okay. Good. A bit of a disclaimer, don't try these techniques at home on other people, because we've gone through, as chiropractors, we go through a lot of training before we get our hands on patients, so we know what we're doing and exactly what we're pushing into. So what we have here is we have a huge amount of restriction in mobility, especially around the hip, okay? So even when I'm taking into him into this position, you'll see that there's very little movement. And when we've assessed him initially, his hip mobility has been a big problem and a big part of his issues. 
So when we have a lot of tightness in the hips, what's going to happen is when we're doing any movement, we're going to get, we're going to get pulling on the spine and on the sacroiliac joints, and this is where he's getting a lot of his his problems. So I'm going to work on just encouraging um, the, the, these joints to move. Okay, so just relax for me, Fargo. I'm going to give a little bit of a push into the spine here. Okay, and nice and relaxed. Okay, so those of you who've been following our Instagram page and our Instagram stories, you might have seen Drago before, and you might have seen me working into his hips regularly. Now, one of the reasons why we've been working into his hips, as I've, said, as I've mentioned, is to release out and, and get that hip mobility to improve. So we've used a lot of techniques from passive stretching, we've been using the Graston technique and instrumented soft tissue techniques, we've used acupuncture, we've used wet cupping, we've used a, a whole array of things, and his hip mobility has gradually started to improve. And we've also gone in doing some functional exercises and things at home to improve his, um, his range. Um, how well he's been keeping up with them though, I can probably say not too great, um, but we've been trying to get him to do as much as we can. So what I would highlight as well, whenever you go for treatment, where you're going to a chiropractor, an osteopath, physio, whatever you're doing, you know, you are going to get the most out of your treatment if you're putting in effort. You know, I don't want you to think that when you go for treatment, you go for these places and they're going to fix you and you're going to come up and you're going to be sorted. It's about what you put in is what you get out. Um, and I think, to be honest, I think we could have got a bit more progress for Drago. Um, I do understand that he's in pain and he's got other things that he's doing and time is limited. But keeping up with your advice and, the, and the, the information your practitioner gives you is extremely important in order to get the best out of your treatment. Okay, so I'm going to be using fire cupping now. So we've worked on um, putting some adjustments in. Um, and now what we're doing is we're going to be using fire cupping, which is, and we're going to be using um, bamboo suction cups. So you may have seen fire cupping before, you may have seen Michael Phelps and various people using cupping therapy in different ways. I'm going to be using an old technique, um, and we use different techniques here, it's not just, um, it's not just kind of uh, fire cupping we use. But I'm choosing to use this particular um, form of cupping because uh, it creates a very strong suction when you use fire cupping as, a, as opposed to mechanical cupping and also the bamboo cups that I'm using um, increase that as well so the suction is generally very very strong and with the type of patient I'm dealing with his muscle tone is really really stiff I'm using um, just some cotton wool which I'm dosing in uh, some surgical spirit and I'm going to be lighting this on fire in just a second with this technique um, obviously there are risks involved uh, in terms of burns. In comparison to kind of medical techniques and surgical procedures though, this is minimally um, kind of invasive and there's very, very little risk. As well as conserving our patient's modesty, we've also applied some oil onto the area, which is usually very beneficial to make sure the cups stay on and they don't fall off very easily. So here we go. Okay, you might feel a bit of heat, okay? <coughs> We're also creating a strong suction, which is working on the fascial tracts. So especially around the hips where we have what we call the posterior uh, chain and the posterior fascia. Um, what we're doing here is we're actually stretching these and loosening them out with the suction cups. You can see that the suction is pretty strong. There's a study done on uh, a case where there was, uh, they were assessing range of motion um, and pain in people who were suffering with um, anterior knee pain and they found that using cupping therapy helped improve range of motion. So this is where we use cupping therapy to help the range of motion in certain areas where we want to improve function um, for the joints that we're working on specifically. Ready? Okay. Right. Yo. Okay. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed our uh, treatment session today. So we ran you through what we did with our patient Drago. 
uh, and the different treatments we gave him. And one of the important things that I wanted us to highlight today is that when you see all these different therapies and these different kind of procedures and treatments and things happening, on their own, they're often not very valuable. Um, and sometimes when we look at them and when you, when you see these therapies being done, you can think to yourself, you scratch your head and say, well, how is that going to help anything? But actually when you put them in the context of a clinical kind of case and when you're putting them together with some objectives, uh, these treatments and these modalities can be really beneficial, especially when they're used in the right way. So anyone can do massage, anyone can uh, crack their own neck or crack someone else's neck, even though I wouldn't advise that. Um, and anyone can use cups, right? Anyone can do cupping therapy. But the art of it is when you put all of these things together and you help utilize them in the right way. So the way I see it is the therapies and the treatments we use at this center are all tools, okay? And when you are using these tools, you can use different tools to achieve different things. Um, and if you are someone who is just using one tool, okay, um, then sometimes your ability is quite reduced. You're not as efficient uh, as someone who can choose from a wide range of tools. And usually if you're, a, um, you know, any, like, like I said, anyone can use a tool, anyone can use a spanner, anyone can use a drill, but not anyone can become a mechanic. So if you become a mechanic, you're someone who has a full understanding of how the body works and how your tools are going to affect the way that thing is functioning. And that's what we do in the sessions. And I hope I've managed to demonstrate that to you today. If you've enjoyed this video, then please subscribe to our channel. We're going to keep lots and lots of videos coming. I'm going to try and show you guys all that I do in the clinic and I'm not going to hold back on anything. Um, and also like our video and also share with anyone who you know will benefit from this content.